December 3rd, we will not be worshiping in this space at all. We will take our worship service to the Star County Fair. Really, really looking forward to that. There will be tickets to pick up next week. If you want to just park anywhere, take a ticket, make your way into the fair, to the pavilion. Um, if you would like, Debbie has also offered to have a particular parking area and shuttles from that area. So we'll, you'll be able to do it either way. Um, and then whatever the ticket that you get will keep you in the fair all day so you can enjoy the fair and we can support the Stark County Fair. So. Great. So there'll be shuttles and um, we'll have Debbie's number around for uh, help. So, okay. Uh, what else is the Holy Spirit up to? Sandy in the back. Oh, go ahead. Start first, Sue. Okay. Well, I feel compelled to, to share all this with you, and it's not just one God moment. I, on Wednesday, I experienced several, and I'm going to delineate them a little bit for you, so see if you can appreciate them as much as I have. Um, number one, I shared with a friend that I was not feeling well, and she greatly urged me to call the doctor So. Miracle of miracles, I got in uh, just a couple hours later at the doctor. Next, I was at a facility to get a CT scan done. Well, I had to wait a while because I had to drink something and took two hours, so, and I was getting a little anxious, but I happened to hear a voice that sounded very familiar to me, and I look up at one of the desks, and here's a lady and her husband were th was there too from our church in Florida. <laughs> so it gives me goose pimples just thinking about it. But anyway, so they were a great distraction for me. We talked about you know things that are the church back there in Florida and things. But anyway, all of a sudden Shirley grabs my hand and she says, "Let's pray." Mm. And I'll tell you, that made all the difference in the world. So anyway, I got my scan done, and the results immediate. So I'm thankful, and then I got medicine. So I'm on the road to recovery, but it could have been life-threatening. So I, I'm very appreciative. So there was a n series of God moments for me, and everything, the Lord just took care of it all. He looked out for me so very well. Mm, thank you for sharing. Yeah, God moments for sure. I saw Sandy back there. For those of you that signed up for the First Ladies Tour, I secured both dates, so we're going to go on August 31st plus September 7th. The signs will go back up on the bulletin board I just need to know if you're going to meet here at the church or you're going to meet at the museum. And there are two people that you need to pay your fees to ahead of time because they would prefer one person pay for everybody at the doors. Great. Thank you. This is a trip to the First Lady's Library. Very fun. Sophia and I went, actually. It's very cool. I want to see your selfies with the sunglasses on afterwards. Okay. I want to... Uh, point out to somebody that does a lot of work around here uh, and is very appreciative. I'm very appreciative of what he does and that is Dennis Wine. He spent all day here on Friday, I think it was, and uh, he weeded everything here and if he wouldn't have done that, you guys would be sitting in weeds. So <laughs> I think everybody needs to give Dennis a round of applause. I appreciate it. The Holy Spirit, Dennis's hands, right? I love it. Thank you. Anything else the Holy Spirit is up to? Dave. I'll keep the microphone for a few seconds. Uh, the Good News Committee got together and made some new soup. So it's in the freezer in the kitchen pantry if you need to use it for yourself or family or neighbors or friends. Um, and if you do use it and you see there's only one or two containers left, 
let me know so we can come in and, and we've got supplies to make some more. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Holy Spirit moment. Drake turns Happy birthday, Drake. Oh, 12 on the 12th. <laughs> Happy birthday. He looks thrilled. <laughs> All right, then let us begin worship with the confession. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Uh, you out here, you stand, you sit, you do whatever you feel like in the hymns, okay? So... Uh, we're going to join with our musicians in singing, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing together the Kyrie. in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For the holy house, for the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. on a world and on our way. Every day that we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on a world and. every day for peace in our hearts for peace in our homes for friends and family for life and for love in our work and our play let us pray to the Lord let us pray to the Lord Kyrie eleison on our world and to God as you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zephah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem and Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I have heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dotham. 
They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. Here ends the first reading. Let us read responsibly Psalm 105, 1 through 6, 16 through 22. Give thanks to the Lord and call up on God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the strength of the Lord. Continually seek God's face. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders and the judgments of God's mouth. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant. O children of Jacob, God's chosen one. Then God called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. The Lord sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him, and, and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. Setting him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his prince, princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Here ends the psalm and the readings. I invite the uh, younger folks forward with their backpacks, but also anybody who works in schools will bless whatever bags or whatever. Come on down. No, we could be right there. Perfect. Okay, so we are getting ready for school. I, you're so excited, I can hardly stand it. <laughs> you can't wait until the new school year starts. So um, I wanted to say a prayer to bless us all as we start a new school year. Sound like a plan? All right, and you all bless us from afar. Let us pray. You can put your hands on your backpacks. Holy God, I give you thanks for these bags that will carry the things that our students need back and forth. But most of all, I give you thanks for those who will carry them, for all of the students preparing to go back to school, for all of the teachers and administrators and staff who will work with them and in every school in our area, Lord. I ask that you bless them, you keep them safe, you make their learning fruitful and their relationships healthy, and that you uh, bless everyone around them through our students. I pray all this in your son's holy name. Amen. All right, we'll take a fish to hang on your backpack to remember. Yes. And if you all have folks who weren't able to make it to the backpack blessings or you didn't bring your bag even though you work at a school, etc., please take them 
uh, on your way out and to those folks who uh, are blessed this week. As they get started, I'm going to, you put these over on the table for me. Okay. Uh, we invite our strings group for special music. Amen. Our sermon series, we've been doing family reunion, tracing our family of faith from Sarah and Abraham to Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Esau, and now Jacob turned to Israel with his family. Last week, Jacob and his 11 sons and one daughter had taken off across the desert running from his trickster uncle, Laban, out of the frying pan into the fire because he was on his way back to his homeland where last time he had seen his brother Esau, his, his brother was vowing to kill him when he saw him again. And so in that place, Jacob laid down to spend a night alone. And a man, a messenger, God, came and wrestled with Jacob and changed his name from one who strives with people, to Israel, the one who wrestles with God, who strived with God and won. Jacob, the one who always grasps on to the promises. The promises of presence. I will be your God and you will be my people. Land, I'm going to take you to a promised land, a place flowing with milk and honey. And finally, descendants. I'm going to make your people as many as the stars. So now God reaffirms that covenant with Jacob. It is you, and through you, 
I will make you a nation to bless the nations. And Jacob's the first one who has a really pretty good start on this, right? I mean, 11 sons and one daughter. We're making a little progress. Jacob spends that night wrestling and walks away with a blessing and a limp. As the sun rises over the place where Jacob has seen God. Well, that's where we ended the story, but of course that's not the end because he still has to go face his brother, Esau. Well, Jacob, you know, he divides all of his things nicely to make sure that um, that if his brother is still angry, not all of his stuff is devoured. <laughs> so he puts half of his belongings and his flocks and his servants, he leaves them and hides them. The other half of his belongings and his servants, he divides into little waves. And he sends them on ahead of him, one wave at a time. And messengers come back and say, yes, your brother Esau is coming He's bringing 400 of his closest friends with him. (laughs) But wave after wave of gifts he sends forward. And in the end, when Jacob finally comes and stands in front of his brother Esau, I don't know if it's the gifts or the time or God softening Esau's heart. But they embrace. Esau says, welcome home, brother. I'm glad to see you. And then Esau says, how about you and your family travel with me back to home? And Jacob says, you know, we're really tired. Why don't you go on without us? And then Jacob turns aside and settles someplace else. He decides not to really test fully that, uh, um, that peace, that tenuous peace he's made with his brother. Uh, so some things happen in the meantime. Uh, Jacob is, is and his family is traveling through the uh, village of Shechem, the city of Shechem. Um, that's where bad things happen to his daughter Dinah, the only thing we really learn about Dinah. I don't have time to go into the story, but I recommend a little detour into it. It's not pretty. So uh, the other thing that happens in these travels is that his very favorite wife, his favorite wife, Rachel, the wife that he loved, who has only had his very favorite son, Joseph, so far, is pregnant again. And she gives birth to her son, Benjamin, and then she dies in childbirth. And Jacob mourns his love. Then they settle. They settle with his flocks, and they begin to pasture this land, this promised land, this land of Canaan. Jacob's brothers, you know, if you've got 12 sons, you put them to work, right? The brothers are in charge of working the flocks. And Jacob is an assistant to the brothers of the servant wives of his father. Uh, Maybe to just... uh, put some distance between him and and some of the others. And it leaves us out of our reading for today because it's kind of long. But uh, Jacob has a little bit of ambition, right? Jacob has dreams. And in his first dream, there are 11 sheaves of wheat. And All of those 11 sheaves of wheat bow down to his sheaf of wheat. As if his brothers are bowing down to him. And I don't know, Joseph cannot keep his mouth shut. He tells his brothers. And you can imagine how they feel about this particular dream. They're angry, they're jealous. Jacob has another dream. And he tells his whole family in this dream, the sun and the moon and 11 stars bow down to my star. So now, not just the brothers are mad, his dad's a little annoyed too. You think your mother and I are ever going to bow down to you? And yet, Joseph remains the favorite, Israel's favorite son. I don't 
don't know. I mean, we've been tracing through this family. We've been tracing God's promise. The only thing that is about as consistent as God's promises is favoritism (laughs) in this family of faith, right? Sarah is so concerned that her son Isaac be the favorite that she casts out Ishmael and his mother, Hagar. What's, what happens with Esau and Jacob? Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And now, you know, partly this whole, uh, you can have my daughter Rachel, but you have to take Leah as well, right? But Rachel is the one that Jacob loves, and he never, ever makes a secret about it. Rachel is the beloved. And now, the oldest son of the beloved, even though he is the youngest in a family of 11, now the second youngest, now that his brother Benjamin is born, is the favorite. And his father gives him a coat. We know it as the amazing Technicolor dream coat, right? The Hebrew is really uncertain. So you notice our translation said, a coat with long sleeves, right? We're not really sure what the word is. It's not used very often in the Bible. But in any case, it is a fancy coat. In a time when everybody has one cloak, and it's for covering, it's their, it's their blanket at night, and it keeps the sun and, and the cold off in the desert, everybody gets one, it's a Pretty plain, Jacob has a fancy one. All of this favoritism, all of this discord in the family means that his brothers are so mad that they cannot speak a word of peace to their brother Joseph. The word is shalom in Hebrew. They cannot greet him and wish for his wellness and wholeness. Now, I don't know what Jacob is thinking in our story today. I'm not sure if he's really hoping that in this moment he can make peace between his sons or if he's just oblivious. But he says to Joseph, I want you to go and see how shalom it is with your brothers. Go see if your brothers have wellness and peace. So as we heard in our story today, he takes off. On a, on a spy mission, in essence, right? Go check on them. See what they're up to. And they see him from a distance. And somebody goes, hey, look, there's that dreamer. Let's throw him in a cistern. It occurs to me that maybe this isn't the first time they've thought about this. Maybe they've uh, been thinking about what they would do if they got a chance. Let's kill him. Let's take his coat. Let's tell our dad that some wild animals got him. It'll be great. Now, Reuben's the oldest, if you remember. The best, right? Who's the oldest? Yeah, uh uh-huh. So it's his job to figure this out, right? To do damage control and to keep the relations with his parents. So he knows, Reuben knows, like, oh my gosh, if this goes wrong, it's going to come back on me. And so he says, "Ah, you know, like, we don't have to kill him. We could just put him in the cistern. Which actually, if you leave somebody in a dry cistern in a desert, same diff, right? (laughs) But Reuben has a plan. He's going to come back later, and he's going to be the one that saves his brother and returns him to his father. So the brothers go along with it. They say, okay, fine. So they take, once once he gets, all of this has happened before Joseph has even showed up, right? So Joseph walks up. They strip him of his coat. They toss him in the well, and they sit down to have their dinner, like you do. So, uh, but as they're sitting eating, 
snacking, congratulating themselves on this great idea and the way they finally solved their problem, they see some camels in the distance. Huh. Look, it's a trading group. It's a caravan. I n why do we kill him? Let's sell him. And then not only have we gotten rid of our annoying brother, but we've also made some money in the deal. In irony of ironies, the people that are coming, the traders, are Ishmaelites. Here we have descendants of Isaac going to sell one of their own to descendants of Ishmael. So along they come. They bundle Joseph off. And suddenly, Reuben returns. <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought we had a plan. <laughs> Joseph not where he left him, in the cistern. So the brothers, they take Joseph's fancy coat, and they tear it up, and they dip it in some goat's blood, and they take it to their father and say, I'm so sorry. You know how those lions are. <laughs> and Jacob mourns. Soon after his favorite wife, Jacob mourns his favorite son. And in the meantime, Joseph's caravan makes its way to Egypt. And he's sold into slavery. The end. That's where our story ends for the day. <laughs> That's our be continued. We know how it ends. That's true. You read ahead. What's the good news if we don't go to the end? For me, the good news is this. God's chosen family, a nation that exists to be a nation, to bless all the nations, is pretty much as messed up as any of our families, <laughs> is about as human as it gets, right? This family that God has chosen to be God's presence to the people around them is human. All of our families, we are products of all of our families. All of the wonderful God-given gifts that we pass down and all of the unhealthy patterns of behavior like the favoritism that gets passed from generation to the next. We are products of our families. We make choices, right? Either I'm going to do it just like they did, or I'm going to do it all the way the opposite. But they shape us. And uh, mm, you tell me your family is perfect? I promise I won't believe you. Because we're human. We're human and we're influenced by all of the brokenness and all of the ways that we've been shaped by that brokenness in the world, as well as the blessing. And through it all, God uses us. God is with us. And none of that imperfection and none of those messiness and none of those unhealthy patterns mean that God doesn't have something to do in the midst of it. And it's not the end of the story. To be continued. Amen. Now we're going to sing our next song. We're going to only do a couple of verses, not a couple, three. We're leaving out verse three. 
And we're going to give our strings group a chance to tune. Okay, right. One, two, and four. One, two, and four. together to say what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all the servants of the gospel. Direct your people to proclaim your love to this congregation and throughout the world. Be with our bishops, Elizabeth and Laura. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain your creation, O God, by fa sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Maintain peace among all people, O God. Raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. 
protect our troops, and help us to care for our veterans well. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayerful God, we pray for all in need. Protect those fleeing from war. Shelter any who are in poverty. Clothe the naked. Soothe all who grieve and heal the sick. We pray especially now for those who we name aloud and in our hearts. O oh Lord, remind us that you hold us, all those we love, all of your creation in your healing hand. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O oh God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with your grace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share a word of peace with your neighbor. Y'all are chatty today. <laughs> they haven't seen each other in a while. Before we come to the altar, we offer thanks for all the gifts that you all have given this week. For those who put their offering in the offering box, for those who use our online giving or mail checks, thank you so much for all of the money. Those things that pay the bills, thank you, we could not share the gospel. But thank you also for all the ways that you offer your gifts. Uh, again, for Dennis and everyone who helped get the picnic shelter ready. Uh, for our tech folks, uh, James especially, uh, this doesn't happen easily in, uh, in the, the worship out here. All the tech is, is complicated. For our musicians and our um special guest musicians this morning for sharing the gifts that God has given them to enhance our worship and our prayer. So let us give thanks for all of these gifts. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation. David fought Goliath. And the psalmist cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nation. Grant us such life the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, <coughs> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone is welcome at the communion table. All of the bread is gluten-free. There is wine or grape juice. We're going to do one line right through here. Come as you feel called. We're going to let the Holy Spirit guide the, uh, the process today. Um, so, all people are called to Christ's table. Come and eat what is good. And we sing as we prepare for communion. on us Lamb of God you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sin of the world grant us peace grant us peace Lamb of God
One of the things I love about having church out here is the bird song as an accompaniment to our worship. It's one of my favorites. Because when we're inside, you guys are all so very quiet and respectful. I don't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> At least outside, there's somebody making some noise. Everybody's always quiet and respectful except for Miss Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, you're going to heckle me. <laughs> Just as long as you don't bring the tomatoes. Now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me when I was in trouble. Jesus lifted me when I was in trouble. Jesus lifted me when I was in trouble. Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. After there are things to carry, like chairs to the garage. So if you want to stay and help with that, you are welcome. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the love of it. Thank you.